Today, we take a look at the field hockey team and their previous and upcoming matchup, preview an upcoming invite for the men's tennis team, and cap it off with a special segment showcasing some upcoming stars here at Ball State University. It all starts right now from the famous Bob Ross studio here on Cardinal Sports Live 12. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Life Plus, filling in tonight for Jace Miller. I am your host, Blake Flynn, and I am privileged to be joined today by my two wonderful analysts, Dawson Perel and Jackie Madden. How are we doing tonight? Doing great. I'm doing great. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm doing great. This is weird for me. I've been on camera before, <laughs> and now I'm the vice president, kind of taking a step back, being the director, but obviously I had a choice in who was going to be on these shows, and from the get-go, I saw you two knew you were going to be something special. So I feel very honored to be able to sit here with you guys. Well, I appreciate it. I I'm feel honored. I'm honored as well. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off our first segment, we head to Briner Sports Complex and look back to last Sunday where Ball State hosted another flock of Cardinals in 12th ranked Louisville. Louisville ended up securing the 4-2 to two win in a tight contest. So Dawson and Jackie, what takeaways did we have from this tough loss? Well, Blake, it's been a tough start for the field hockey team so far this year. Taking a look, just a recap in their season in a month deep. They're 1-5, and 0-3 oh at home. And with that loss against Louisville, they now lost their last three. But I think you take a look at that game against Louisville, and, and you don't, don't necessarily uh, see it as a huge negative. I mean, again, you've had a rough start to the year, and you, you're now playing a very tough ranked National League team in the Louisville Cardinals, and you competed. I mean, it was a close matchup start to finish, and yeah, everybody hates to lose, but you look at that matchup, and uh, you know, it, I think you can take some good out of that and say we competed with a tough team, and hopefully that'll give them some confidence moving forward. Yeah, specifically, like Dawson said, um, speaking on this game against Louisville, um, they shot um, on goal, un it was under, as far as the corners was under as well. The only thing that I saw that they were over on was serves, and I feel like going into this next matchup against Miami, I feel like we need to make sure that we make those serves um, and turn them into, into goals. I feel like definitely, even though if we got it done on the defensive end, I feel like offensively we didn't execute as well as we could have. Um, Louisville is one of the nation's top defensive teams, so and they definitely showed that in that matchup. But I feel like um, that our cars need to make the adjustments that they need to going into this matchup against Miami and overall blend together as a team and being more in unison, and we'll get the win. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, like you guys have mentioned, it's a very tough loss against the 12th ranked team in the Louisville ACC tournament, probably one of the front runners in that conference. But like you guys said, they played well, especially, like you said, Jackie, against a very good defensive team. Yes. And you have to believe that gives them confidence, like you were kind of touching on, Dawson. So what do you think the coach is saying to them right now about this game as they're moving forward? Yeah, I think heading out of that, there, uh, I think coach was really just mentioning, you know, how, you know, we competed. And again, it wasn't an all negative game and, and we had our bright moments. And I think the big thing that maybe th their coach was pointing out was shots on goal. Louisville had 17, Ball State had only six. I think that's a big thing. Uh, maybe they're pointing out there in that locker room and in practice this week is, you know, we need to be more aggressive. They, they need to be more aggressive on, on the offensive end and get more shots up because in games like field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, whatever you want to say, obviously goals is the most important stat, uh, obviously, but shots on goal is a close second. You know, whoever has more opportunities is tend, uh, tend is going to win more. And fortunately for Ball State, they, they took uh, – you know, they were more efficient with their opportunities. I mean, they had two goals on six shots compared to Louisville, who had four goals on 17 shots. So they were more accurate, which is a, a thing to take away there. But I think they just need to get more more shots up and, and uh, with that, be more aggressive, especially on the offensive end. Exactly, as you said, be, being more aggressive. I mean, in that game against Louisville, they were down 2-0 at the intermission. So I feel like definitely during that intermission, coach was talking to them as far as making sure we can turn the game around. And sadly, they didn't be able to execute it. But I feel like those words and just moving forward, like in just practices they've had in between, I feel like he's definitely making a statement as to, hey, we need to change the game around, change our energy. That way we come into this Miami matchup overall, you know, feeling great and as a team. Yeah, obviously, again, like we said, the tough loss. You were there, you could have won it, but obviously, again, against a good team like that, you know, sometimes it's going to tip a little more in their favor, but you just kind of got to look at things one game at a time. You got to take away what you can. You know, obviously, you were able to come back from being down 2-0. You just couldn't finish. Yeah. So, obviously, that's something they're probably going to talk about. For sure. Um, 
and you just take one game at a time. That's something my coaches would always say, and I'm sure that's what the coaching staff here with the field hockey team is talking to them as well. Well, after that loss to Louisville, Ball State now sits at 1-5 and five on the season. The Cards will return to Briner Sports Complex to compete in their second MAC matchup of the year against another team of Redbirds, that being Miami of Ohio. So what can we expect to see from this game, and what does Coach Walsh and the team need to do to get a victory in this contest? Well, I think this is a very highly anticipated matchup. I mean, it's the Red Bird rivalry. It's at home at Ball State, and as you mentioned, you know, you're coming off of a tough loss. You haven't, you haven't won anything uh, in three games. You lost your last three, so it's a big game here in Miami of Ohio. They're, they're a tough team. You know, they're not necessarily having the strongest uh, season, but they're 4-4. Four and four. They're 2-3 and three on the road. Uh, they did lose three of the last four. They are coming off of a big win, but still, I think, you know, lost three or last four. They're still a little hungry. They want a little bit of a revenge after kind of a low point in the season. So I think that's going to make it tough on, on Ball State's uh, field hockey team. But, uh, again, I, I think if they can really just uh, play their game and finish strong, because I think this one is pretty much guaranteed to be close like uh, most rivalry matchups are in any sport. Uh, they're always close. So I think, you know, just playing your own game and, and finishing strong, uh, considering it's most likely going to be a close matchup, I think uh, Ball State's got a real good shot at this one. Like Dawson said, you want them to play their own game, but as well, you also want them to make sure they're blending together as a team. I definitely want to personally see players like Nadia Brittle and Jenna Wickoff. Um, Nadia is a senior defender. Jenna is a um, senior forward and midfielder. I want to definitely see them both stepping up, you know, specifically Nadia on the defensive end and Jenna on the offensive end, making sure that they make their mark and actually, you know, have some effects to the game overall. So that way not only are they getting their individual, you know, individual stats, but they're individually playing, I mean, togetherly playing as a team. Yeah, no, I agree. And obviously uh, this is one that was probably pinned on the calendar for a while, circled, yeah. circled a couple times. It's yeah. a big matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, while the records, obviously, like you said, they're four and four, we're one and five. Would you consider this really a trap game for Miami of Ohio? I mean, I think, yeah, I, I think I would say that. And almost, I, I would, I think trap games aren't really even possible in rivalry matchups, I'd say. I, I almost think that no matter what the, what the records are, I mean, you've heard a million times, records are thrown out the window when it comes to rivalry matchups, and I think that is very much the case here in this one. I think it's just whoever plays the better better uh, game that day, and again, both these teams are pretty equally, uh, uh, I think, matched up against each other, and yes, Miami of Ohio is having a better, better year, but I think both these teams have the uh, ability to beat any team in the country. I mean, we just mentioned that with Louisville, uh, with Ball State, their, their last matchup, uh, and that being a close game, so I think both these teams have the ability, they have the potential to compete with anyone uh, anyone at any level. So I think, it, I would say, yeah, it's a trap game, but I think it's a trap game for both both teams because it, it's going to be a, a loud and it's going to be a hostile environment. Uh, so I think, again, for Ball State, you, you just got to play your own, your own team and or your own game. And Miami of Ohio, they're very experienced. They have five seniors on, on the roster, three graduate students. So they've been here before, they've played these games before, and I think that could be uh, pinned against Ball State because especially in these loud environments, these hostile environments, you want that experience. But uh, again, I, I think I think uh, either of these teams can win. It's whoever just plays the better better game that day. I mean, as Dawson said, that we're coming into this rivalry matchup, but I feel like we're coming in, and as you've seen and as he stated by the stats in just previous, in previous games, we're coming in as underdogs. Who doesn't love a good underdog comeback story? I mean, I know I for sure Absolutely. do. So I would definitely love to see our cars coming out there with intensity. Like he said, it's going to be in, the, in that arena where, you know, it's going to be loud, it's going to be a lot of noise. But I definitely feel like if we come in, play our play poise and play as a team, we'll be totally fine. Yeah, and I think I want to mention one thing here. Another thing, uh, Ball State hasn't beat Miami of Ohio since 2011 in yeah. field hockey. So I think uh, Miami of Ohio could be coming in this matchup like, oh, it's Ball State. We beat them every year. And exactly. I think that could play into that trap game type of scenario that you're mentioning where, where they are not going to see it as a serious matchup. And that's where Ball State can really take advantage of it. Absolutely. Pretty quick uh, score prediction. Oh, that's going to be tough. I'm going to go. I think it's going to be a low-scoring matchup again. It's going to be hostile rivalry. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go just two to one. Ball State wins. Yeah, I think I, I might have to go the same. I was thinking if not two, maybe three one. But it's yeah, it's going to be physical. I yeah, think, for sure. Scoring. Oh yeah, absolutely. Me personally, I think I'll probably go towards like a four three. Ooh. Pretty high scoring. Nice scoring. Pretty good. I like it. Still Ball State and taking I, a total. And I hope it's our way. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yep. Well, that game will be happening today at noon. Serving things over to the courts now, the men's tennis team is getting ready to kick off their second Invitational of the fall season with the Cardinal Invitational happening, happening this Saturday and Sunday. Ball State will be joined by Bellarmine, Butler, and Xavier to make up the field for this competition. 
What do you think would make this a successful invitation for Clayton? Well, I think it's simple. They just got to repeat the success that we saw from them two weeks ago in the fall invitational. Exactly. I mean, they, they had a very, very good weekend, September 13th to the 15th. They won 20 total matches over the span of the three days. And they're going to be si seeing some very similar, uh, some similar um, matchups in the fall, fall or the Cardinal Invitational, excuse me, than they did in the fall Invitational. That being Butler in there, Dayton in there, also Xavier. So, uh, you know, th it was a su successful weekend. I mean, you take a look against Butler. They won four of the six matches against them. And then against uh, the other couple opponents, they did very well against them. So it, it was a very good start to the season, a good good note to start on. And I think you just got to continue that momentum going into into the Cardinal Invitational. Again, you're going to be back at home once, once again, which is nice. And uh, I think they have the ability to just keep it going, keep the ball rolling, and keep building that momentum. As Dawson said, we played very well in that fall invitation. I would love to see us play the exact same way. Of course, making minor adjustments. You know, we're playing some different teams, but playing the same, playing the same way with the same intensity. Um, our players who were really good in that fall invitational were Nathaniel Webster, Block Fletcher, and um, Ian Brady. We had a couple other players as well who made sure they stepped up. But those three, to me, definitely stood out. And I feel like with them continuously playing how they're, you know, how we expect and hope for them to play in this Cardinal Invitational, I feel like we'll be totally fine. You always want to make sure you have your other players who are constantly stepping up and making sure that they're making their mark in this in these matchups. But again, what these these guys leading the team, I think, will do uh, just well. When we played against Butler and Xavier, we had, you know, we came out on top previously. But I also want to make sure we're not coming into this um, Cardinal Invitational um, in a lackadaisical kind of play style. I still want us to come in with that same intensity and making sure we overall get the win. No, yeah, absolutely. And like you were saying, Dawson, we have seen these teams before. Obviously, like you mentioned, we saw Butler and Dayton at the last Invitational. We played all four of the teams, including Bellarmine last year. Yep. Uh, and the only team we dropped a game to was Dayton. Yep. We lost that one pretty close contest. Um, do you think, I mean, we obviously like to see the same competition because we know what to expect, but would yep. you also kind of think that it's meaningless at some points to see the same teams over and over again, or would you rather see some new competition out there that you're not ready for and don't know anything mm -hmm. about so it gives you more of a shot? I mean, I think both can be very beneficial. I mean, I, I think it also depends on the team. A and when you look at tennis as a sport, I've mentioned this before uh, with our previous segment, but it's really just how you play your game. And it's definitely when it comes to tennis because, you know, there's a net separating the two two teams. So it's really just how you're playing your game and uh, you're not even close to your opponent um, necessarily. So I think it, while, while yeah, you're seeing the same opponent, the outcome could be totally different if it just depends on the day. And at the same time, it's not really a team sport. Yeah, there are, dub there are doubles, but at the end of the day, it's mostly a single or a double sport. So... Um, I think when it comes to just how you're playing that individual day and Ball State, I mean, they were a very good team at home last year. They were six and two. They were 12 and 10 overall record. And you mentioned it, you know, they, they beat a majority of these teams outside of Dayton uh, last season. So I think they're going to be hoping to repeat some of that success, but it won't necessarily be easy. I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, we mentioned they, they beat them in the uh, fall invitation, which is great, but they're going to be looking for revenge. I think it's something to mention. So, you know, they're, they're, you're, they're coming into Ball State's house, but they were looking for some revenge. So Ball State's got to be on their A game. Yeah. I feel like definitely, as agreeing with Dawson as always, but I definitely think that them playing the same teams kind of in a way, it kind can kind of give you that advantage because you're kind of knowing your opponent a little bit. Even though I feel like tennis is more of a game where seeing whoever, make, whoever makes the different changes and adjustments, I feel like that's a big thing. So, but being able to pick up uh, on those adjustments, whether it's your own adjustments or your, you know, your get, is getting served back to you, making sure you make those adjustments so that way not only can you be better than you were last time, but overall you all can win, still win as a team. Yeah, absolutely. And one last thing before we send it off to our fi final segment here. Um, like I was telling you guys before the show, I kind of view the fall as like a tune-up for the mm -hmm. spring because yeah. you're going to play a lot more of spring. That's when you play your conference games. Uh, we have the ITA Ohio Valley Regional at Purdue um, after this, and then the MAC Indoors at Western Michigan, also including this Cardinal Invitational. Yeah. So what would you like to see from the team as they go from fall to spring to finish the fall preparing for that spring season? I mean, I think growth at the end of the day is what you want to see. I'm sure I'm sure is what, what, coach is, what, what coach is saying, what the other players want to see. And, yeah, it is almost sor sort of a – a preparation for that spring, that conference play. But I think at the same time, these games are just just as important and they want to win them just as bad. So uh, I think, um, you know, just playing your own game, as I've been mentioning, I think some players to point out, Sajan Smith, 
He's been having a very, very solid, solid uh, career so far. He was 13 and six last year. He won eight out of his 10 last matchups um, heading into the heading into this season. Another player to mention here for Ball State, the junior Jax Lan Lancaster. Uh, he was 10 and four last season, and he won his last six matches last year. So I think you know just carrying that momentum into this season because the season is obviously still very young, and then carrying you know the fall into the spring. It's really all about just br building up that momentum and carrying it into, as you mentioned, the conference play in the spring. He literally stole exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to see growth, as he said. But my big thing that I always love to see that teams continuously have, no matter who they're facing up against, whoever's on the other side of that net, I want to continuously see intensity. You know, I feel like that's a big thing as far as making sure you're going out there and playing at your best effort, you know, as, as hard as you can, no matter who your opponent is. I feel like we shouldn't take anything lightly. Yes, you know, we're kind of we're getting into the season where it's starting to pick up and stuff like that. But I feel like no matter who you're going against and who you're playing, making sure you always have that intensity so that way you all can be together totally effective. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Stazen Smith. Obviously, he's been one of the stars for Coach Gil Richards. Uh, he has battled some injuries before, so it's mm -hmm. nice to see him kind of get back on that track to health and finally be able to compete 100% yeah. and be the dominant factor he is. And then going back to Bill Richards, I mean, he's been here forever. This yeah. isn't his first go around. Yeah. Uh, the courts are named after him. He's a legend in tennis itself, not only as Ball State. So he's got the right man at the helm for that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, like I was allud alluding to earlier, to finish off the show right, we are going to end with a segment of Cardinals taking flight. For those of you who are new to this segment, including myself, we're looking for those Ball State athletes who might be flying a little bit under the radar in terms of recognition, but are rising up and making a name for themselves. So Jackie, I'm going to have you start this off. Who is your Cardinal taking flight? My Cardinal taking flight is one of our women's golf players. Her name is Jenna Estrevillo. Um, she's a sophomore this year. Last year she was a freshman, of course. But in high school, she was the ninth ranked player in her class. I mean, and that's that's just a statement right there in its own. Um, but al along with this, as well with her stats, she played six um, at the Golf Week Junior Championship, along with three top 20 fi finishes in AGGA uh, um, during 20, uh, 2020, 2022 campaign. So like I said, she's definitely made sure she's made her mark, especially coming in as a freshman who, you know, dogged her class. Yeah. So I definitely feel like she's coming into this sophomore season. I feel like it'll def at the word for this show is more so growth. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to make sure she's, you know, going into that sophomore season. I want to see the growth over, you know, from what she's learned freshman season and what she's learned from the seniors and, you know, just the graduate students that she played with pr previous to this. But um, I feel like she's going to come into this season with a lot of growth and showing that, hey, I can swing. <laughs> yep, yep, awesome. Well, I'm going to keep it on the li links, uh, moving it over to the men's golf team with Happy Gilmore, of course, a fan favorite, given his name. But uh, he, he put on quite a performance in the Put Me In Coach Invitational. I mean, a freshman stepping up there, and he finished tied in third place. He was first among Ball State golfers. And again, you're a freshman. You're com coming in there. And I mentioned it uh, two weeks ago on our, our, our last show. Um, Golf is a very mental s mental sport, probably one of the most mental sports there are, and it's really a game of mistakes. And as a freshman, that can be really tough to just yeah. stay on your pace and just, you know, ease the nerves because this is a whole different stage uh, from high school. And Happy Gilmore, probably one of his, if not his first really big uh, invitational, his big, uh, big stage he was kind of put on, and he performed just uh, phenomenally out of this world, probably exceeded everyone's expectations. And... Uh, you know, he, he had a very, very good weekend. His best round came Monday, uh, the second round. He, he had a best best round of the tournament with five birdies and an eagle there on uh, the par, par four third hole. So it, it was a great, great uh, performance from Happy Gilmore. And, and really both golf teams have been seeing a lot of success so far this year. Yeah, not only, like you said, is it a mental game, it's also a very individual game, obviously. Yep. Um, you have that team aspect into it where you can – you know, take the scores and figure out what team did best. But it's all about the individual. Yeah. So for those two to be going out there and killing it definitely is a good sign. For my Cardinal taking flight, I will be picking uh, someone from the football team, okay. uh, Elijah Davis. Um, he is a redshirt freshman defensive back from Pike High School, six foot, 186 pounds. He had five tackles against Central Michigan. And he also had a very key forced fumble in that game as well. Um, and against Miami, uh, down in Miami, Florida, he had six tackles. Um, so he's getting more of that playing time. Definitely not someone, you know, coaches would be kind of scared to throw in some younger guys, especially yeah. if you're a redshirt freshman. He didn't play at all last year. Yeah. So this is his first time seeing competition on the field. 
but obviously he's showing that he can be that person and be a key part of the secondary for Coach Moot if he needs it. I do got a bonus one, though. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be remiss if we didn't mention one of my favorite athletes of all time here at Ball State, um, a past Cardinal and past UCLA Bruin as well, but we got to give a shout-out to Carson Steele. We talk about Cardinals taking flights. I mean, you can see it on the screen, NFL stats, 26 carries, 99 yards, 3.8 yards per carry. He's the RB1 now for the back-to-back defending Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs, as much as that pains me as a Bengals fan. <laughs> um, but he's going to get a lot more, and Andy Reid definitely has faith in him. And it's just good to see these former Cardinal athletes yeah. taking flight, as we say, into professional wherever they're playing, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, whatever the sport is, it's just always nice to see Ball State somewhere associated with that person. And he's got a pet alligator, too. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, Carson's taking flight on the biggest stage there is. So I, I, And I also love what you said about Elijah as far as he's getting it done on the defensive end. I feel like that's a big thing coaches, you know, really pay attention to. Can you can you go out there and play defense? I, yes, I want you to play offense, but if you can play well on the defensive side, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, and you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, mouth. I had Carson Steele on my notes right here. <laughs> I was going to mention his name because, yeah, I was watching that game, and he looked very solid. I mean, yeah. kind of stepping up on that big stage, similar to who we've been talking about with the golfers. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he – I don't, I don't necessarily thought he didn't think he'd see this amount of carries, but, you know, he, he's definitely not – uh, when the Chiefs are healthy, he's not near the top of the running back list. But, you know, their their first two running backs got out, and then he took that step up, and he took it well. And, unfortunately, couldn't get into the end zone, but I bet that that time will be coming here soon because, oh, yeah. you know, they, they really they really fed him, and he, he handled it well. And uh, especially considering two weeks ago, you know, he had that fumble lost. Uh, I don't forget who they were playing, but the Bengals. yeah, no, <laughs> they, they, there you go. <laughs> He's a little happy about that, but yeah. yeah so I think you know that that could have took him back a step, but he kind of just had short-term memory loss, put it behind him, and then that next week uh, put on uh, quite a performance. So really, really good to see him, you know, taking flight. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Watching him from high school to college and now mm -hmm. the NFL, he's definitely shown that he's very capable. He plays with his heart. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what you want from a football player, especially someone who's carrying the rock for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that will conclude this edition of CSL Plus. Thank you to everyone who turned in. We appreciate all of your support. Feel free to follow us on Instagram and X at BSU underscore CSL. And subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Cardinal Sports Live and Cardinal Sports Live Plus. For Dawson Peril, Jackie Madden, our producer and president, Trevor Martin, and director, Jackson McCord, and everyone else back in the studio and behind the cameras who makes this possible, I have been your host, Blake Flynn, and we will see you next time here on Cardinal Sports Live Plus.